want to talk to you this morning about who will be saved. Who will be saved. Lord, thank you. Speak to our hearts. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. There's a lot of scripture I'm going to read. This, is, this theme is so all through the book. It's all through the book. Of course, especially the New Testament. There is a day coming. There's an old song that says there's a great day coming. There's a great day coming. And it says there's a sad day coming. There's a sad day coming. And for most people, unfortunately, it's going to be a sad day. Hebrews 2.3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape? Now what does it mean to neglect? And just as the Lord's already been dealing with us this morning, it's not that we intended to do that. It just happens sometimes. But to neglect simply means to do nothing, to forget to do something, to leave something undone, to leave out, to leave undone, to give no attention to, to, and then to disregard, to ignore, to admit, or to overlook. So how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If we do nothing, if we forget to do something about our salvation. If we leave our salvation undone, if we leave, leave it out, if we leave it undone, uh, we, we give no attention to it if we disregard our salvation. If we ignore it, if we admit it, if we overlook it, how are we going to escape? There's no other plan. There's no other way. Now, the neglect can be unintentional or it can be intentional. But either way, it'll still produce the same results. We're not going to be able to stand before God and say, Oh Lord, I forgot. Or I was busy. Or something. Well, what are we going to escape? What's he talking about? How shall we escape? Revelation 6, 16. And said to the mount, they said to the mountains and the rocks, these are the people that are left behind when the Lord comes and his wrath is poured out on this earth. And they're going to say to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him, that's God, that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, that's Christ. I know he's pictured as meek and lowly he said he was, but I'm telling you, you don't, I don't want to incur the wrath of the Lamb. For the great, you know, they had wrath against him on that cross, but there's coming a day he's going to have wrath. For the great day of his wrath, the Lamb is come and who shall be able to stand? I ask a question this morning. Can anyone not believe that this world and even this nation is ripe for judgment? Is there anyone that doesn't believe that? And that the wrath of Christ is about to be poured out upon it? I've never seen anything like this. I mean, this is way over the, the line here. What's going on now? And you know what? We haven't seen anything yet. Don't think for a minute it's going to get better. The tide has turned. I know there are people that hold out and say, well, God's going to do something and bring people back to Him. What if God's going to do something and pour out wrath because He's sick of it? And I believe that's the way it is. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow or slack concerning His promise. That's the promise of His return. As some men think, but is long-suffering or patient toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord doesn't want anyone to perish, but He can't and He will not make people believe, accept Him, live for Him, obey Him. He will not. We may wish we had of, and we will if we don't. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Earlier in this chapter, he's talking about the flood. People say, they, he said, 
The, the apostle Peter was saying, people are saying everything remains just like it was. Everything's just, listen, we're living in a time when everyone, most everyone thinks everything's just going to go on just like it is. Even people, Christians, think this thing is going to go on like it is. I'm standing here telling you it's not going to go on like it is. The can's been kicked too far down the road. Judgment's coming. Do I want it? No, no more than you do. What can we do about it? That's what we're talking about this morning. Escaping this that's coming. It'll come as a thief in the night. Scripture talks a lot about Noah. They just buying, selling, building, doing. Talked about Sodom, Gomorrah, both those places. Instant judgment fell. They, they thought it's just this is going to go on forever. Marrying, giving in marriage. Hey, you know. Seeing then that all these things. Let me, let me give you a scripture. The scripture says, Beware when you think you stand, lest you fall. I know we like to make that a spiritual thing, and it is. But I want to say something. Nation, beware when you think you stand, lest you fall. Nation. Beware. But well, we're, we're the United States. We're the greatest. Beware when you think you stand lest you fall. Seeing then in all these... Oh, I've got to give you another one. Scripture is very plain. The, the nations that forget God, He'll turn them into hell. That's what He said. If He did it with His own, the children of Israel, if He did it with His own, why do we think he wouldn't do it with this nation or any other nation? Look throughout history, folks. Look at the book of Judges. You know what that whole book is? One, it's just a cycle goes on and on. They'd get way out of line, forget God, go into sin. God would allow enemy nations to come and attack them. Gideon's, a, and the Mennonites is it, it, an example of that. And so it goes on and on. And so God would send them delivered. They'd, they'd humble themselves, repent, get right. As long as he's living, she's living. They'd do right when they're dead. They'd back into it again. And then God would let their enemies come against them and destroy them. Are you hearing me? Well, we're the big nation. Look out. And they would destroy them. They'd repent. This go on and on. Someday, it's all going to be over, though. Someday, it's all going to be finished. It had, let me add, I don't know if you're with me this morning. The book says it's going to come to an end. I don't care who the top dog nation is. It's going to come to an end. He said the works there will be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy lifestyle and godliness? So what are we supposed to be doing? Looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of God where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Everything you own, everything I own is going to melt with a fervent heat. All these wonderful buildings. You know, they, the disciples took Jesus on a tour of the Temple Mount and said, look at these buildings. He said, you know what? There won't be one stone left on another. They thought, wow. It, it wasn't but a few years, and it happened exactly like he said. That ought to be a sign to us. Yeah. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise. Okay, that's what's going to happen with this world, but what are we supposed to be looking forward to? His promise. We look for new heavens and a new earth. Not trying to make this earth better, heaven better. We're looking for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Oh, I just don't... I, you know, I, it won't take but a few seconds in that new heaven and new earth to realize how bad this was. He is. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, are we? Be diligent that you may be found in him in peace, 
without spot and blameless. I say this morning, it's time to inspect your robe. It's a time to inspect your robe. Is there a spot or blemish? You know what I mean by robe. Your life, your heart, your mind, your thinking, ours. Luke 21, 25, Jesus speaking. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, heart attacks because of fear, and for looking for those things which are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Christ, he's talking about himself, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things become to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. These things, it, our redemption cannot draw nigh until these things happen. I know we sometimes we are afraid. We fear. We don't know what's going to But these things, listen, His kingdom cannot come. Our redemption cannot be near until these things do come. And He spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. And when they now shoot forth, you know, the buds coming out, the leaves you see and know of your own selves that summer is near at hand. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. I'm going to tell you something again. We had not seen anything yet. Truly I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. What generation? This, the generation that sees it begin to happen will see this thing come to pass. That's what he's saying. That generation. Some believe that when, when Israel became a nation again in 1948, that the generation that saw that, that was alive, will see the end of it. And we're nearing that end of that generation. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but let me say this. If you were doing odds on Israel becoming a nation again, you could win every lottery in this country. There'd be better odds for that, is what I'm saying. But God, what God says is going to happen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Take heed to yourselves, lest your souls be, listen to this, weighed down with self-indulgence and drunkenness are the cares of this life. And is that happening to us? Is that happening to us? I know we all got things going on. We got difficulties, got things we got to figure out, things we got to fix, things we got to put together. I know that. But we cannot get distracted from the main thing. It's so easy. When Jesus gave the parable of the seed and the sword, that's one of the biggies. <laughs> the cares of this life, one of the biggies that made them produce no fruit. And that day come upon you suddenly and unexpectedly. For like a trap shall it come on all them that dwell, all them that dwell on the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, not some of them, all of them, that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Oh, what a wonderful promise. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make a very... A strong statement here. Don't mind making it. What about the great tribulation? Are we going to go through it? People don't understand. Look, there's tribulation going on all over this earth right now. You talk to those that are literally laying down their lives for Christ now. You look at some of the African countries and how that those people, the other religions are trying to annihilate them. I mean, this is if you're aware of any of that. But the great tribulation is the wrath of God poured out on sinners. I don't believe I'm going to be here. I believe he's going to come back and get his own. And we have examples with Noah and the flood, with Lot and his family, and fire and brimstone rained down upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Will we go through tribulation? Yes, we will. 
But we're talking about the great tribulation, which the scripture says has never been that bad before, never will be again in the history of man. That's what we want to escape. Uh, two, th two major things are mentioned here that are so terrible that people will want to escape them, should want to. First is the wrath of God called the great tribulation that's coming upon this earth. Second is the wrath of God called the lake of fire or the second death. Hell. Some people just call it hell. Those who are counted worthy to stand before the judgment seat of Christ will escape both the great tribulation and the great white throne judgment that ends in the second death, which is eternity in the lake of fire. I'll give you some scriptures. Revelation 2.11 He that has Christ is speaking here. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This ear and here. He that overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Revelation 26, Blessed and holy is he or she that has part in the first resurrection. There are going to be two resurrections, the resurrection of the righteous, the resurrection of the unrighteous. And the resurrection of the righteous comes first, the resurrection of the unrighteous comes later. The first resurrection, on such the second death has no power, oh praise God, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 20, 11, And I saw a great white throne. There are two judgment, judgments. The judgment seat of Christ where the saints, his first resurrection, will go before him, not be judged as whether or not they, they go to hell or, or heaven. They'll be judged according to their works and rewarded accordingly. That's the first judgment. The second one is the great white throne judgment. It, said, it says here, and to him that, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. That's how terrible this judgment is going to be. And I saw the dead, small and great, that means young and old, whoever, whatever, whoever they were in this life, stand before God, and the books were open. That's the record of their lives. And another book was open, which is the book of life. That is the likeness image of Christ is recorded in the Holy Scriptures and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books that's the book the record of their life according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works that ought to put some holy fear in us and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire this is the second death and whoever was not found written in the book of life. In other words, the books of my life are going to, if, if I'm there, I don't intend to be there. Oh, God, help me. But those that are there, the record of their life, the books, the record will be open and compared to Christ. And if it's not, if they are not in the image of Christ, this is what's going to happen. They will be cast into the lake of fire. Now who will be saved from the wrath of God? Hebrews 10.35 Cast not away therefore your confidence, your faith, which has great recompense and reward. You know the devil's always after your faith. Always stabbing and jabbing and kicking and tripping. He said, for you have need of patience. You ever get so tired? Lord, why is this happening? Where? When is it going to stop? I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to stop as long as you're breathing. Some people say, well, I'll just do away with myself. Well, that's kind of stupid. That's jump out of the frying pan into the, to the skillet, the fire. I think it's the fire is the way it goes. And I'm sorry that people, you know, I don't want to get into all that this morning. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, that's Christ, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul, the Lord, his soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back to perdition, that's destruction, perishing, lake of fire. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Those who faithfully do the will of God and who do not go back to this world and sin shall be saved. 
It's not just escaping of our physical body from the wrath to come. Oh, I don't want to go through the great tribulation. Well, I'll tell you, there's something worse than the great tribulation. It's called the lake of fire. It's not just our escaping of our physical body from the wrath to come, but our soul. It's our soul that must be saved eternally. Hebrews 5, 9, Christ became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey Him. There's a clue. Who's going to be saved? Those that obey Him. Not obeying Him, you're not going to be saved. Period. Well, you got this excuse, you got that excuse. Well, Mama did this, Daddy did that, somebody over here did something. Won't work. It was all that was tried all through the Scriptures. It didn't work for any of them. For instance, Saul. Well, you didn't come when you said you'd come. He's talking to Samuel the prophet. And I just, I just forced myself to do what I wasn't supposed to do. And Samuel said, you should. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore, Christ is able to save them to the uttermost, completely, totally, that come to God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. If you'll come to him. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, should not perish. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God is not in the condemning business. The devil is. He that believes on Jesus is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name. Now, let's stop for the name. What is it we're supposed to believe in? The name. What does name mean? It means the image. The image of Christ. The Im it said the name or the image of the only begotten, not created, only begotten Son of God. I just It's not just that I believe Jesus died and rose again. Okay, wonderful. The devils know that. Did you know that? They know that and believe that. They saw it. But you believe in His image, the image of His person, his likeness, his character, his nature. And if we really believe, we'll obey that. Acts 4, 12, Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name or image under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 1 Timothy 1, 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. It's Apostle Paul speaking. Mark 16, 15, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? It is Christ to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. Matthew 7, 13, Enter in at the straight gate. That's the narrow, small gate. For wide or spread out or big is the gate, and broad, wide, spacious is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in their at. Years ago I had a, a dream. And in that dream, there was a line forming. It was, it was perpetually forming. I mean, what I mean, people were just getting, I saw that the people were just getting in that line. Single file line, and it was moving. And I was going, well, where is it going? And I could see somehow the end of it, and at the end they were dropping off into hell that line. And people were getting in that line. So I, I you know, I, I tried to talk to them. I'd go up and down to at least the end of the line trying to talk them out of it. No, it is like zombies, so they could not hear me. They were deaf. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. They were just deaf. They were mesmerized. They were just and then I felt something pulling on me to get in that line. I said, oh, and I ran. I ran. And I went to a room where there were people that are waiting upon the Lord to come. It's a broad way that leads to destruction. i tell you what, let me tell you this. If you ever had your kids say, well, everybody's doing it, why can't I do it? That's a sure sign not to do it. It's a broad way that leads to destruction. If everybody's doing it, you better go the other way. The, the straight way, the narrow way. Verse 14, because straight, look, if the whole world and the whole country, the whole state goes crazy. 
Don't do it. I don't care what they're wearing. I don't care what they're smoking. I don't care what they're drinking. I don't care what they're taking. I don't care what they're watching. Because straight, narrow, or small is the gate, and narrow or compressed, con listen to these definitions here, compressed, contracted, affliction, distress, and trouble. That is that is what that word means, the Greek word means there, straight. It's talking about if you go this way, there's going to be affliction, distress, and trouble. Is the way. Who's the way? Christ is the way. Which leads to life. How does affliction, how does distress and trouble lead to life? Because without death, there's no resurrection. Without death, there's no life. Death to what? Death to ourselves. Leads to life. And few. Now, who's going to be saved? Few. Few, few. F-E-W, few. Few. And you know what? And sometimes you look around at your, at, at your own family. And you got to realize it's few. But if you go to funerals, everybody's going to heaven. But everybody's not going to heaven. I'm sorry. Few, that means a small, little number there be that find it. Compare it. Acts 14.22, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now what faith is this? It's not our faith. It's not a faith in Christ that we must continue in, but it is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot stress that enough. The faith that we have is worth nothing. We have to have His faith. And the only way we can have His faith is if He lives in us. That's what we must continue and abide in. Colossians 1.21 And you that were before alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has He, Christ, reconciled. In the body of His flesh through death to present you, you holy, blameless, and unreprovable in His sight. Now, I need to say this. The cross was very important. Jesus dying on the cross is very important. But that, that will not change you. You can be forgiven of your sins because of what he did on that cross. That's the purpose of that. But that is not what saves you. you I see a lot of people putting three crosses in your yard or in the churchyard or whatever are wearing a cross around their neck, that ain't going to do anything for you. Only Christ living in you, being revealed in you, is going to change you. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which is Christ. Now some will neglect this great salvation, while others will be moved away from the hope of this great salvation in Christ. Do you understand that? Some will neglect it, Default. And some will be moved away by different and various things. But now what could move you away from the salvation of your soul? I've heard people say, I'm not go I'm gonna go to heaven. I'll never do that stuff again. I'll never had a young man stand over on this side many years ago. He just got out of prison. He stood up. He said, I'm never gonna do drugs again. I'll never do that again. I'm gonna tell young people don't do it. You'll never see me go back to prison again. I'm not I, 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 and I thought to myself, oh, I wouldn't be saying I. I'd be saying if the Lord helps me. I don't know. He went back to prison several times. Because you can't do it yourself. I can't do it myself. But what would move us away? Galatians 5, 7, you did well. You ran well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth, which is Christ. Christ is the truth. He's the way. Galatians 6, 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. What's well-doing? It's becoming, coming into the image of Christ. First, it's not our works. That's very that's proven. They said, well, we did this and we did that. And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. First Thessalonians 3, 5, For this cause, when I could no longer wait, this is Apostle Paul speaking, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter has tempted you, and our labor is in vain. 
He said, I wanted to know if you still in, have the faith of Christ. The scripture says when, he, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Whose faith is he looking for? His faith. In us. Tempted you. Lest the tempters tempted you. That will move us away. Could. We don't have to let it. Hebrews 4.14. Is there something secret in your heart this morning, your life? Something you're hiding, something you're doing? Is there attitude? Is there bitterness? Is there anger? Is there lust? Watch out. If, you don't, if we don't overcome it, it's going to move us away from the hope. Hebrews 4.14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Our faith. The faith of Christ. That's our, our faith is to be the faith of Christ. You know, the, uh, Paul said, lay hold on eternal life. you got to lay hold on it. It's not just going to happen. 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. What's going to be revealed? Our salvation, kept by the power of God. you got to cry. we got to cry out to God. Oh, God, help me. Help me, help me. Cry out to him. No time for pride here. Or self-sufficiency. 2 Peter 2.20 For after they, have, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Is there any pollution in this world? Through the knowledge, meaning knowing, knowing Christ. Knowledge of the Lord, that's knowing Christ, not information about him. They are again entangled therein. That speaking of the pollutions of the world and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning or what they were before they were converted to Christ, gave their heart to Christ. If, what's it, what he's saying is, if we become entangled again in those pollutions that he delivered us out of. You know, I've heard of people, many over time, well, I think I can handle it now. I know back then... The Lord dealt with me about it, and I quit doing it. But I believe I can handle it now. Your heart's done going to lust, and that's what that is. I think I can do this, and I'll be okay. Now I've had them ask me, Brother Pinch, you think it's all right if I do this? You already know it's not all right, or you wouldn't be asking me. Shun the very appearance of evil, the Scripture says. The appearance of and shun the people that are doing <laughs> those things. Verse 21, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, that's Christ, he's the way, than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment, that's the words of Christ, delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed is returned to her wallowing in the mire. I've heard people say that believe in eternal, unconditional security, once saved, always saved, once a son, always is saved. You read this, you read this, this is the scripture, you read this, you're calling me a dog. I'm, I'm just reading you what it says. I I'm sorry it just blows holes in your theology, but it's the scripture, you know. John 15, 6, if a man abide in me, Christ speaking, if a man abide not in me, excuse me, he is cast away as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. Oh my. See, we've got to abide in Christ. We have to live in him. First, it's not just I'm going to get saved and then I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to get my sins forgiven and I'm, and everything's hunky-dory with me, with, between me and God. Now I'm just going to, you know, 1 John 3, 3, And every man that has his hope in Christ purifies himself, even as Christ is pure. Revelation 19, 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. How are we doing on that? We're making ourselves ready. How do we make ourselves ready? We obey. We behold him. We see the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, as we behold him, we're changing the same image. We see what he is. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit shows us. You know, you, it's just like um, I told you. I was coming out of that 
man's house and I'm thinking, well, he's, you know, he's going to see the difference between where he goes in, in this church and he'll just come here. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit rebuked me. Praise God. So what do I do? I repent. I'm making myself ready. Don't want to do that one again. <laughs> How many times a day do we have sometimes? I don't want to do that again. Thank God he's rebuking us. Thank God he's correcting us. Do you not want him to? Do, you want, do we want the Lord to just let us go on and be stupid and end up in the, in the bad place? But the only thing is, correction hurts sometimes. Well, Lord, couldn't you just write me a little note and give it to me? He did. It's called the Bible. <laughs> but we won't read it. Praise God. Verse Acts 4.12 Neither is salvation any other, for there is none other name or image under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Luke 13.23 Then said one to him, Lord, this is Jesus, are there few that will be saved? And Jesus said to them, Strive to enter in at the straight or the narrow gate. Strive. For many will seek to enter in and shall not be able. That You know, that scares me. I put some fear in me. There are people that are trying to get in the gate and are not able to get in it. I mean, they're not even over there at the broad gate. They're not even over there. They're over here trying to get in the narrow gate. At least they got the right gate. And they can't get in. Well, why won't they give in? That's a whole other subject. But one thing is because they got things they won't let go of. It's a narrow gate. You know, in, in uh, the Pilgrim's Progress, that book that was written, the Pilgrim's Progress, he had this thing on his back, this weight and all this stuff on his back, and he couldn't get through the gate with the thing. You got to take it off. Lay some things. Hebrews 12, lay aside the sin that so easily beset you the weights, and run with patience the race is set before you. So strive to enter in. And then he says, when once the master of the house is risen up, he's talking about himself, and has shut the door, just like God shut the door on that ark and nobody else got in. And you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say to you, I do not know where you're from. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in your presence, and we've taught in, you've taught in our streets. Lord, we sit in your house, we sit in church. I got all the pins, so I never missed a Sunday. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you're I know not where you're from. Now another scripture says, I don't know you. That's what he's meaning. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. It'll be the saddest. Words a person will ever hear when he says, Depart from me. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, grinding of teeth, when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and yourselves thrust out. There's an old song, I'd rather be on the inside looking out. It talks about I'd rather be in the ark looking out when the rain's coming. I'd rather be in, in the fiery furnace and Jesus appears than to be on the outside. It's, it's a, an old song. Oh, I'd rather be on the inside looking out than to be up on the outside looking in. Praise God. Thrust out. You know Paul, the Apostle Paul, in Jerusalem, they hated him so and they shut, they cast him out of the temple and shut the doors on him. I'd rather they shut those doors than God shut the door to salvation in heaven on me. And they shall come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. Romans 9, 27, Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. For he shall finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make on the earth. I'm telling you folks, this thing's shorter than we think. It is shorter than we think. 1 Peter 3.20, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering or the patience of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, by getting in the ark. Few. 
Matthew 22, 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like to a certain king which made a marriage for his son, sent forth his servants to call them that were invited to the wedding, and they would not come. Will you come? They wouldn't come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are invited, Behold, I prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatted calves are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the marriage. Talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb in, in heaven. That the bride's making herself ready for her, the church. But they made light of it. Are you making light of it? And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and, and treated them spitefully as the prophets and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was angry and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were invited were not worthy. S Scripture again speaks of being worthy to escape those things that are coming upon the earth. Go you therefore in the highways, and as many as you shall find invite to the marriage. So those servants went out in the highways and gathered together as many as they found both bad and good in the wedding was furnished with guests. See, I'm just reading you some scripture. I'm telling you this thing that is all through the scripture, escaping, escaping what's coming. And God wants you to escape. He wants me to escape. What else does he have to say to us? And when the, you know, one, one, the, the rich man that died and went to hell, and in hell he said, would you send Lazarus back and, and, and tell him to warn my brothers? And Abraham said to him, if they won't believe the prophets, if they won't believe the prophets and the word, they won't believe them. If even if they, even if he came from the dead, people are hard-hearted. And when the king came in to see the guests, now listen, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. What is the wedding garment? It's the image of Christ. We're changed into His image. He said to him, friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment or the image of Christ? And he was speechless. Not going to be arguing, fussing, or making excuses. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Please hear what I'm saying this morning. He was speechless. Do you understand the Lord is saying they'll be speechless when they stand before him? He's telling us that. Can we get the hint? Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him to outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing or grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Who's going to be chosen? The ones to prepare for the Lord to come. Matthew 24, 12, how do you prepare? You be changed in the image of Christ, transformed into his image. There's no sin in Christ. Matthew 24, 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. That's, we're seeing that right in front of our faces, right now in this nation. We're seeing it. Iniquity is abounding, and people that never would have done the things they were doing, bad things are, are beginning to do it. You know, years ago, I, 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 my parents were living down in East Texas, a little further, and I went to visit them. And they were sitting there watching their favorite TV program, CSI, whatever that's called, it's something. And they're sitting there, and I thought, and they was cussing, and they were doing some naughty things, and there's stuff going on. I thought, aren't y'all going to get up and turn this off? Are these my parents? Are these my parents? They just sit there. Nothing. You know how you boil a frog? You just put him in cold water and turn the heat up. And you just boil him. Is that happening with us? Are we getting desensitized to all this that's going on? Are we just beginning to accept it? Well, that's the way things are. Doesn't make anything right. I hope, I hope that speaks to somebody. Sitting there watching stuff you ought not to be watching. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. No matter what comes to us, we must endure if we intend to be saved from the wrath to come in the second death of the lake of fire. I'm almost through. I mean, I'm almost through.
Romans 11, 22. Behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God. On them which fail severity. God can be very severe. But toward you goodness. If you continue in his goodness. Otherwise you also shall be cut off. Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house you are if we hold fast the confidence. And the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Hebrews 3. 3.14 For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Will you stand with me? I'm telling the Lord is saying this morning don't give up, don't give in don't get distracted don't go back don't return to your own vomit the stuff you used to do don't go back to wallowing in that mire that you used to be in. Hold on, hang on. And if this morning, if you, if there's some here this morning that your heart's not right with the Lord, I, I, I can't give you a, a formula, a salvation formula. But I can tell you, you can repent. As the scripture says, repent and ask the Lord to, to change you and become your real Lord and live in you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Before we come forward, I, is there some this morning, but before I ask everyone or invite you to come, is there some this morning that you come and say, my heart's not right? with God and if he came right now if the Lord returned right now I would not go I'm not ready I am not ready would you come if that's you this morning praise God rather, rather it would be better to be embarrassed here if you think that's what that is to, than to be embarrassed before the whole world and before God thank you Father thank you Father Praise God. All right, if you'll come and stand, we want to pray for you this morning.